Hello everyone, welcome to this video on periodic review system. Before we start going through any calculations, let's look at the basic difference between EOQ and periodic review system. So if you remember from the previous calculations about EOQ, we were using quantity as constant. So every time we order from a supplier, we are ordering a quantity which was equal to EOQ and which was coming from a standard equation to ds over h right so the quantity is constant however we can order any time from a supplier and depending upon the demand from the downstream process so in a nutshell if the eoq let's say is 100 units i can place an order after two days after five days after seven days after two weeks it entirely depends what's the demand for a given period on the other hand for the poq system uh, the the time between the orders is constant which simply means if i place an order let's say on week two review period or the periodic review is given as let's say two weeks the next order i'm going to place on week four then week six then week eight i cannot place an order in between however given that the demand is variable your order quantity can vary here in let's say here on week two i may order 100 units if demand is high then on week four and the expected demand for the following week is going to be high i may order 250 units right so i can vary the order quantity however the review period is 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 constant so from here let's look into one graphical representation uh, on periodic review system to see how the entire system works so before we go through this graphical example let's get familiar with some of the terms so i'm going to start with the t which is the maximum inventory so the idea here is once you receive or from your supplier which is q you're expecting that your inventories will go to a maximum level right so t here represents represents the maximum inventories or the maximum level sometimes it's called target inventory level and the t is function of d var which is the average demand during a period average demand during week during a day during a month right uh, so don't treat this as capital d capital d is the annual demand so if you're given with annual demand get the average demand from here so what period i need to use you will determine that from lead time so let's say if the lead time is given in weeks. So the D var is going to be average demand during the week. If lead time is given as days, average demand for the day, right? Uh, so D bar and your lead time, they should be in the same units, either weeks or days and so on. So before we kind of dig into this equation, if you guys remember when we did the EOQ model, our equation was D bar LT, which was the average demand during lead time, plus z sigma square root of lt which is safety stock during lead time but now as a period r is fixed that's another part of the equation here so what we're doing here is we have average demand during review period and lead time safety stock during review period and lead time part of the reason is if you place an order let's say on week two the next order can only be placed on week four so i need to consider the demand for this future period or the review period and from here once you know the target level then you can calculate the ordering quantity so which is t minus inventory on hand so now the inventory on hand will vary depending upon the demand for a given period so that's why your ordering quantity is variable here right so if demand is high your inventory on hand is going to reduce so which means your ordering quantity will be relatively higher than the previous week if demand is low the you are going to have more inventories on hand which means your ordering quantity q will be relatively smaller than the previous weeks so from here let's look into the example but so before we kick off with this let's keep two terms in mind so we're starting with a timeline zero then we have our review period r equals to 10 10 units 10 weeks 10 days whatever that is so that doesn't matter too much at the moment and lead time is 2 right so as we start making sales from our inventories so your inventories are going to deplete so this black uh, line here representing the usage of inventories on day 10 we are at a certain level 
right so i'm going to call it let's say at level x that what you are on on day 10. as our review period is 10 so we're going to place an order here right but as we place an order we have lead time of two days we will not receive inventories immediately after placing an order we still have some usage that will happen right so for next two days we are still going to use those inventories so the quantity you're going to order on on day 10 will be determined based on the physical inventory on hand or the or the on hand inventory from here right so in simple terms if our target let's say is 100 units and on this day 10 we have 50 units on hand so the value of q is going to be 50 from here right so 100 minus 50 will give me 50 so i'm going to order 50 units from our supplier on this particular day so as time goes on so on day 12 you're going to receive the inventories so this is going to take the the actual inventories back to a level based on the quantity I have ordered, right? So based on value of Q, we are going to take our inventories back, of our physical inventories back to a certain level. So now this, the, the new level that we have for the inventories may not be same as the target, right? So remember earlier when I was doing the explanation, I said, hopefully we will achieve that level, right? Uh, so it's not always possible because as you're making sales during lead time period, then you're always going to be lower uh, than, than, than the target inventories, right? So from here, as we move for further, so, so we're going to still, we're going to make some sales. So depending upon demand, as we reach the, the next mark on the 10 days, which means on day 20, right? So we place an order on day 10. After the review period of 10 days, we're going to reach on day 20. We're going to place another order. Now this, the, the how much we want to ask from a supplier, again, is going to depend on what we have physically on hand, right? So in this case, we have physically on hand is 25 units, right? So here it was 50. So which means as our demand was high for, for this particular period, we were able to make more sales. Your ordering quantity is going to be 100 minus 25, and we have 75 units being ordered from your supplier. And again, remember we have two weeks of lead time. So which means we need to wait for two more periods. So sorry, I was keep on switching between weeks and days, so it doesn't matter. We are just referring to this as a period so you will receive your inventories on um, after two 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 periods once you have placed an order so that's going to take it back to a certain level and the cycle goes on right okay so again this as you can see q double bar is going to be very low because for this particular period after receiving a second order the demand is very low right so in this case again your q double bar will be calculated based 100 minus let's say 75 so you're only ordering 25 units so you go through the cycle the only thing to keep in mind is that your review period and the lead time and now the next question is what if we have uh, demand fluctuations so that's where your safety stock comes into play right so remember z the value of service level will determine how much safety stock to keep so that will guard you against any unforeseen circumstances for both for the review period and for the lead time period. So from here, uh, based on this explanation, here's the formula that I kind of explained earlier. So let's look into one example from the worksheet. So here we have example five in chapter 11, worksheet part two. So you're given a scenario for a hardware company with stocks, nuts and bolts, and they order them from a local supplier once every two weeks or 10 working days. The lead time is two days, weeks or 10 days, and now you're given the lead time as two days, right? So at this point, make sure that we are treating everything in the form of days. Why? Because your lead time is given two days. So we need to convert these to the common units, right? So I'm going to write these values here. So I have the value of R as 10 days and the lead time as two days, right? And then we have company has determined the average demand for half inch bolt is 150 per week. So you're given with demand per week, which is 150. 
So from here, we can calculate D bar. So we know the weekly demand 150 and we have five working days in a week, right? So that will give me 30 units per day, right? Per day, 30 units per day. Okay. And we want to keep the safety stock of three days supply on hand. And order is placed uh, this week and the stock on hand is 130 bulls, right? So the stock on hand, on hand is 130 bulls. So from here, we're going to calculate the target level inventory in the first part. So as you know, the formula for target level inventory is D bar R plus LT plus Z sigma square root of R plus LT, right? So we don't know this term, the safety stock part. What this is already given to you guys, so what we have, we want to have safety stock of three days supply on hand, which is one day supply is 30 units that we already calculated, right? So safety stock calculated because we want to have three days worth of supply. So 30 units per day multiplied by three, which is 90 units, right? So now we all know all the values. So I have T, target inventory, D bar, which is 30, 10 as my reorder point, two as lead time, plus 90, right? So once you solve this, so that's going to give you 450 units as target inventory. So get level inventory, and now we can work through the number two. So how many half inches bowls should be ordered this time? At this point, you're given with the stock on hand as 130 units. So the ordering quantity is a function of T minus stock on hand, right? So the target is 450 stock on and here's 130 units which is already given as part of this question so I need to order 320 units for this week right okay so pretty straightforward so as I said earlier when while I was explaining uh, the graphical part make sure you consider both reorder point and lead time right the most common mistake I have seen that students mix this formula with D bar LT plus C sigma square root of LT. No, that's applicable to when we calculate ROP for the EOQ model, right? So in this case, we need to consider the R as well. So don't use this formula for the periodic review model, right? So there's another example, example six, please have a look at it. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach me out. Thank you very much.